Seeing Beyond the Obvious by Dr. Earl White Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8 Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. The word prudence needs definition. It is amazing how we will read our Bible and do a kangaroo over what we don't understand. Sometimes that part of God's work lies dormant because of the neglect of the reader to take time to examine. The word prudence is found in Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 12. Huram said, moreover, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that hath made heaven and earth, who hath given to David the king a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding, that he might build an house for the Lord, and an house for his kingdom. Prudent is defined as cautious, circumspect, practically wise, careful of the consequences of enterprises, measures or actions, cautious not to act when the end of the doubtful utility or problem is impractical. The prudent man Looketh well to his goings. Proverbs chapter 14. This is the from the commentary by Dr. John Gill. The Christian life is lived on a higher plane. John 8, 23. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of the world, I am not of this world. This was a strange message to the unbelievers. The disciples must have had some insight, but they did not let it show. Christianity is to be lived with a constant pull toward heaven. That is where the Christian belongs. When we are saved, we change our homeland. We are now engaged in the work of the Lord until he comes again. The Christian life is lived under his supervision. The Lord Jesus didn't have to come. He is a volunteer. This is the way he wants us to live, but he has now made himself available to all who call upon his name. In one way, Christianity is easy. It's just a matter of trust. When an unsaved man goes to the Lord in desperation and asks for salvation, he is always welcomed at the throne of grace. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the Lord Jesus is not a constant, in constant contact with all his children. He knows who they are, what they are enduring, and is with them through it all. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be con- be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Greek text from which we get our King James Bible inserts the strongest possible negative in this verse. I will never, no, never, Never, never leave thee, nor never forsake you. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Think of the worst thing man could do to you. Take your life? Jesus emphatically says, I will never, never, no, never leave thee. I will never Never, no, never forsake you. You are mine, and if the enemy should take your life, I will be there for you when you step over the great divide. There is the proof of this in the history of the church. Many have sung hymns and witnessed to their enemies 
as their flesh burned off their bones. I can hear someone say, I don't think I could do that. No, and the martyrs didn't either. The Lord was with them, strengthening them, and gave to them a song to sing at their graduation service. The Christian life is rewarded with eternal rewards. The rewards we get here are temporal in nature. They're certainly thrilling to receive. It is always good to get a small blessing from him. They let us know that he is watching and pleased with what we're doing. But man, those temporal blessings will fade into the tomb of time, never to be remembered. One day, we will get blessings that have no end. We need to be good business people. I believe it was Jim Elliot who said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. A man is a lunatic to put his whole emphasis on his physical body and do it in exchange for his eternal soul. Matthew 16.26 For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We need to see beyond the obvious This is seen by faith. When we visualize in our minds what God hath promised in his word, it is as good as seeing it. We do not walk by sight, we walk by faith. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today. Justify